Hey guys, it's Sarah. Welcome back. So today I'm going to be kicking off my first ever Smutathon vlog. This round of Smutathon is being run from January 4th through the 11th. Technically today is the third and it starts tomorrow, but I had went out today and did up my face and stuff. So I figured why not start a little bit early so you can see that I don't always just have my hair up in a ponytail and look bedraggled and homely. Um, <laughs> I do sometimes put effort into my appearance, but usually it's because I'm filming after work and I don't often put effort into what I appear like at work because I get up so dang early in the morning. Like I have to be to work either at 6 a.m. or at 7 a.m. So I don't give myself a lot of time in the morning because I value sleep much more. Um, Anywho, so we're kicking off Smutathon a little bit early. Uh, I will leave links to Ginger Reed Laney and Riley Marie's channels, who are the hosts of Smutathon and the Twitter account and whatever else there is involved, down in the description block box if you guys want to check it out. So this year we have nine prompts and there is a bingo board, but I'm just going to run down the prompts really quick. So the first one we have is Enemies to Lovers. We have a 2019 release, an LGBTQ plus book a new to you author, a forbidden romance, a workplace romance, a book that was recommended to you, whether by a booktuber, a reviewer, a friend, family member, what have you. Um, we have a fake dating slash marriage relationship. And then we have a book that's out of your general comfort zone. So I have a total of four books. They don't all fit into all of these categories. They were just books that I was kind of like, yeah, I'm interested in reading those. Um, and then I have a kind of cheating fifth book because I have already started it. I'm about halfway through Enthralled by Gianna Darling. Now, if I, like I said, Smutathon officially starts tomorrow. So I'm, ha I'm about 50% of the way through it on my Kindle. If I finish it today, I'm not going to count it. I'm going to pick a different book in its place. But if I don't finish it today, depending on how far I get, I'm gonna count it toward my Smutathon because I will technically be reading it then during Smutathon. That makes sense. I don't feel like that's cheating, but not really. Uh, so Enthralled would fall under, definitely new to me author. I've never read a Gianna Darling book before. And I do believe this would count as a 2019 release because I think it came out at the beginning of the 20 of 2019, if I'm not mistaken, because I think it's a duet, so Enamored, I think, is the second book, came out in November. I also think I would probably consider this out of my comfort zone, sort of. Like, there aren't a lot of things that, like, bother me or make me cringe. Um, the only thing with this one was I didn't know what I was getting into when I started it. I honestly don't even remember making the conscious decision to download this from Kindle Unlimited and start reading it. I just did, and I don't remember really thinking about it or having a reason that I wanted to and I had no idea what it was about when I was going into it. So I was sincerely severely surprised <laughs> when um, things started happening and I'm like what is going on? Uh, but now that I'm aware, so uh, pretty much if you don't know, Enthralled is about a girl, our girl named Cosima and I always want to say Cosimo because I recently watched Medici Masters of Florence and that is the name of the main, I think it was Richard Madden's character, Cosimo de Medici. <laughs> so obviously this takes place in Italy and Milan, at least at the beginning of the book we're in Milan, with Cosimo, Cosima, see I did it, I knew it was going to happen at some point, Cosima and her family, her father is Irish which I found to be interesting. But her father has a serious gambling problem and gets into a huge amount of debt with the uh, Italian mafia. Um, and in order to pay off his debts, he sells Cosima into the sex trade. Yep. His own daughter sells her off to some British lord who blindfolds her and car drugs her and carts her off to his a palace estate castle thing in England where she wakes up shackled to the floor of his ballroom butt ass naked and I'm like 
this is the very like, the beginning of the book so i'm like what is happening <laughs> this is when i had no idea what it was it was a, it was a um a like a bdsm dominant sub novel i'm like what is going on um but then once he revealed that he is a dominant and she is his slave slash submissive i was like oh, okay this is like a darker more serious 50 shades gotcha um so that then i was like okay like i can do this so i it started getting really interesting there's also a reveal that i'm showing you this like this is there's a cover on here <laughs> i'm more than likely there's gonna be the picture is up here that i don't know why i'm waving this around anyway it's revealed at some point that the whole reason he um bought her she can infiltrate this mob and kill the person who killed his i don't know if it's his wife or his mother i forget i forget which i think it was his mother i'm not sure uh, you can tell how much i've been paying attention it's been a couple days since i read this though so i need to get back into it but um yeah so there's a little bit of a it's getting good though. I mean, it, it, it was good. It was just the very beginning. I was just, when I didn't know what was going on, I was a little bit surprised. Um, but yeah, so that would be my first book of Smutathon if I don't finish it tomorrow or don't finish it today, I mean. So um, that's kind of like my cheating, half cheating, not really cheating sort of book. Uh, in addition to that one, though, I also am going to read uh, Checkmate, This is War by Kennedy Fox. Um, I've had this one on my Kindle for a while. Before I downloaded Kindle Unlimited, I was looking to see what books were free just with a Prime membership, and this was one of them. It's also the first of a duet, but I don't remember exactly 100% what it's about. Um, but this is uh, advertised as an enemies to lovers, so we'll put it under that category. Um, and then... The other Kindle Unlimited book that I found was To Love Jason Thorne by Ella Mays. And this would be a fake relationship. I think it's a fake celebrity relationship. So got that one. Um, I would also consider that a recommended to me because I think it was Jess from Peace Love Books recently read that and enjoyed it. So I'm putting that one on my list. Um, so the next two are books that if I wanted to, if I do read them, if I do have time to get to them I would have to purchase them because they're not on Kindle Unlimited and the first one is Bad Saint by Monica James uh, this would be a forbidden romance a dark it's very dark forbidden um, I think this is also a 2019 release if I'm not mistaken uh, this would also be an anime or a, uh, I'm sorry this would also be a new to me author along with Ella Mays I haven't read books by either one of these authors before and it would be a recommended to me book because Jess Again, from Peace Love Books, also really enjoyed this one, and I've seen her mention it quite a few times on her channel. So, looking forward to that one. And then the final book that is on my tentative TBR is The Right Swipe by Alicia Rye. This is a workplace romance, at least I think that's what it would fall under. Um, it's also a 2019 release and a new to me author, so we're hitting hitting them all. The only one I think I don't have is the LGBTQ one, which, I mean, um, depending on, I know I'm definitely going to read or try to finish the, the three books that I have on my Kindle. If I don't feel like forking out the money for Bad Saint and The Right Swipe, I may find try to find something already on my shelves, which I should probably do anyway, because, you know, if you watch my, I don't know, this will be, my reaction video is going to go out after this vlog, or maybe go before this vlog. I don't know if you watch my one reaction video you'll know that I really need to start reading the books on my shelves because it's getting kind of ridiculous but shh. anyway that is my tentative TBR for my first ever smutathon um so it is currently four o'clock right now on Friday and I do have some editing to do I do I did film a couple videos the last few days I edited two out of three of them so I need to edit the third one and uh, if everything goes swimmingly, then I'll be picking up this one sooner tonight rather than later. Uh, so I'm going to find something to put on TV that I don't have to sit and watch. I have been watching the new season of Younger. Well, new to me. Season 6 of Younger. They finally added it to Hulu, so I'm about halfway through that. But I really 
don't want to have it on the background because that's a show like I like to sit and watch. So I'll have to find something else to put on as like a background noise. Um, and that's it, I guess. I do have to work. I work through most of this readathon. I'm off again next Thursday and Friday, but I do have half days. Uh, I actually have half days tomorrow, Sunday, and Monday, which is nice. So um, if I'm not busy doing a lot of doing stuff around the house, then I will be reading like a fool. So yeah, that's it. I guess I'll see you with my next update. Hey guys, so it's a good thing I actually started this vlog bef the day before Smutathon officially began because it is currently day three of Smutathon and I did not update you yesterday or the day before. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of an update today. I finished Enthralled by Gianna Darling and I gave it four stars. It was so good. Um, I sped through it and could not wait to pick up the second book, Enamored. So I'm currently reading that one. Um, I'm not gonna count Enthralled as part of Smutathon because I did get to like 80 some percent um, on the day before Smutathon officially began. So I didn't feel like that was, I didn't have a big enough amount of it left that I would consider it a Smutathon book. But I am gonna count Enamored which changes up my TBR a little bit. Um, so right now I'm not reading any books that are on my official TBR, but Enamored would fit also under a 2019 release and probably Forbidden Romance maybe? Cause it's maybe. Um, definitely 2019 release though. So right now I am 33% into Enamored and I am so enjoying it. I don't, I mean, it's just about two o'clock. I got home, I had a half a day of work today. Um, and I did pretty much what I needed to do for the most part. I do have a few like writing things to do, but I may, I don't know if I'm gonna read or do that first, depends, but I'm gonna try to get as much as I can finished of Enamored today. Um, yeah, so um, by the way, while I was at work today, I was listening to Spotify and Kelsey Ballerini's song Stilettos came on and oh my god did I just envision an entire like music fan video of um of Cosima and Alexander because I feel like that is such a song for her especially in Enamored so if you guys I think there are playlists that are all go along with these but um I highly recommend you guys go listen to that song and just like it fits enamored like so well in my head. Um, so I was like super excited. I was like, oh my God, like I gotta go listen to this song again in that context. Like I feel like <laughs> it just, it fits so well. Um, so absolutely go listen to that. I will actually link the, I don't know if there's a music video or a song or something on YouTube where you can listen to it down below if you guys are interested in it. It is a country song. I like country music among other things, but I do listen to country music, but that song fits fits their dynamic and their story so well especially in enamored and i'm just in love in love and it's like when i find songs and things like that that give me the, all the fangirl shipping vibes that's when you know that i am going to be obsessed with a couple or obsessed with a book for quite a bit of time following because anytime that song come on it'll just i'll just think about it and my heart will ache <laughs> um so yeah but that's pretty much where I'm at right now. Um, like I said, I do plan on reading as much as I can of Enamored today. I have uh, two full days of work the next couple days and then I'm off for two days. So there are still uh, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th. So there are still five days left of a Smutathon. So with any luck, I'll be able to finish Enamored and maybe another book or two that are on my TBR. And honestly, I will consider that a successful readathon, even though I do currently have four or five books that I wanna read, but if I read three, I will be beyond happy because normally I read like one book in a week. So for me to read three books in a week would be so awesome. Um, but yeah, so that's it for this little bit of an update. It's six o'clock on my Friday night. Technically it's Wednesday and also day five or day four, day five of Smutathon. Um, 
and I haven't finished my first book. I think I'm 60% of the way through uh, Enamored still. Still haven't finished it. It's a lot longer than I thought it was. And I don't think I'm going to finish it tonight. I'm going to try to get as much through as much of it as possible, but we'll see. Um, but today is my Friday, so I'm off tomorrow and Friday. Uh, so we'll see how much I can get done then. And so I still have three days left of Smutathon. Hopefully I can at least get this book and one other book. I was trying, hoping to get three books done, but I'll take two at this point. Um, see where we're at. Yeah, that's it for my teeny tiny update. This vlog is going to be so boring and so short because I have not really had the time to read. I haven't been doing anything interesting except working. I've been doing a lot of working. Um... I haven't even really been watching TV. I don't like, I think the last show I caught up on was young, season six of Younger. And I finished, I caught up on Virgin River. They're both really short seasons. So um, I haven't been, I haven't started watching anything new or trying to catch up on anything new yet. I'm kind of in the mood to rewatch The West Wing. I usually do like an annual rewatch of that. I'm also kind of in the mood to start rewatching Supernatural again, but I really don't want to start tr watching from the beginning when they're going to come back from their winter break. I think next week, actually, they come back from winter break and um, I don't want to be watching season one while I'm trying to remember and keep following what's happening in season 15. Like, there's just going to be too much going on, so... I might save my Supernatural rewatch until the show is over and I can just rewatch in its complete entirety um, over the summer, probably. I think they end in May. So maybe I'll end up rewatching The West Wing. Maybe Stargate again. I don't know. I'm not, I don't know if I'm in a, am I in a, I'm not really in a Stargate mood that I'm aware of right now. Um, but the new, there was a new commercial with Martin Sheen about like some kind of prescription where he does this like big healthcare speech and the, the the woman behind the counter is like, oh, I didn't want to interrupt. It felt like a West Wing moment. And I was like, yes. And it's about time for a West Wing rewatch. Re I don't think I actually finished my complete rewatch the last time I did it. Cause I think seasons, there's seven seasons. And once you get to like Santos, I'm like, nah, season six is okay. Um, but when you get to like season seven, I kind of start to fade out. Seasons one through four are, yeah. Because Aaron Sorkin is a freaking god and I absolutely love pretty much everything he does. Uh, again, ooh, maybe I'll rewatch The Newsroom. Mm, that's a really good show. If you guys have not seen The Newsroom, it's only three seasons. They're short seasons because it was on it was on uh, Showtime I think or HBO one of the I think it was on HBO. Um, so good, highly recommend it if you have not watched it. Very good. Um, it's about a news network anchor who that the very famous clip that he does is about America not being the greatest country in the world was from the newsroom. It's from the very first episode. Uh, I think it's the very first scene of the very first episode if I'm not mistaken. Not sure. Uh, but yeah, excellent, excellent, excellent show. Love it. All right, friends, it is a few hours later and I finally finished Enamored by Gianna Darling. Um, I have to say, I was a little bit, I don't know why I say disappointed, um, but I have to say I did like the first book better. Um, this one relied more heavily on like the mafia side of things i do have to say i did like the dante character and i am super hyped for his book we don't have a release date yet but um there is a i don't know if it's an actual cover or just like a mock cover but we have a cover and the name is interesting i think it's called a hill a hill or something I don't know I'll put it up here I'll put it up on the screen so you guys can see what I mean um, but it's a curious title I'm not sure the significance of I'm not sure what it means um, but I am cannot wait to read Dante's book um, 
his character was just so interesting and I'm not going to reveal who he is really because Dante is like his mafia name um so you'll have to read the books to discover the truth um but yeah I loved his character and um he was probably the most interesting factor in this book uh, I felt like a lot of I felt like a, like a it was a lot of ping ponging. It's like there were so many different facets of the storyline being um, broken open and then like resolved and then broken open again. Like there was another hump that wasn't completely uh, it wasn't completely closed the first time. It wasn't completely like you know finished off. So then we had to take the little piece that wasn't quite wrapped up and blow it open to wrap it up. But there's a little tiny piece that was still left open that we had to blow up to wrap up. Like it was just a lot of like, I don't even know how you would explain it, but it was, it felt like there was just so much going on. And I felt like it should have been like certain, I almost feel like it could have been in, put into a trilogy. Um, like the, the first series in this store, in this world. Um, which I didn't read because I didn't know that this was kind of the second part. The first trilogy, I forget what it's called. It was uh, Cosima's sister Giselle's story, Giselle and Sinclair's story, who are who are you have a really big part in this these two books. So there were uh, things mentioned in this book that I was like I don't remember that happening and I think it was from the original trilogy like I guess there was some kind of assault that happened on her sister at a, uh, a gallery or a show a show or something like that um and I was like I couldn't remember that actually happening so I feel like that was from the original trilogy um but yeah I'm not sure if I'm gonna read the original trilogy I'm not at the moment feeling really like compelled or really like wanting to I just really want Dante's story. That's what I'm holding out for. I gave, I gave Enthralled four stars. I'm gonna give Enamored three stars just because it wasn't quite up to the the up to the standard of the first book. Like the first book is a lot of dominant sub BDSM sort of storyline, and this one shifts. There is that in there, but it's like not the same. I don't know. It just wasn't what I was really. I'm not. A, I guess I think it's just because I'm not really into like mafia book books about the mafia, books about store stories of the mafia and stuff like that. It's just not really my thing. Um, even though I haven't really read a whole lot of books centered around that, I don't really like mafia movies. And I can tell by reading when I was reading Enamored, I was like a skimming through a lot of like the those parts in it, and I was just like, yeah, I, okay. <laughs> um, so even though Dante is part of the Mafia, I still want to hear his story just because he's such an interesting character, um, just because of his background. Um, so yeah, that's, and there was a lot of really, f I mean, the, the first book was fucked up, but this one was like really fucked up, especially the, near the ending. I was like, okay. Um, so yeah, that was really actually it was a little bit frightening and I'm not gonna go into why because it's a spoiler like a big spoiler um but yeah so I would definitely recommend these books um I did read them they are free on Kindle Unlimited uh, if you have a Kindle Unlimited subscription but I think these are books that I'm probably gonna put on my like would like to buy list and have like an actual physical copy of because I think I feel like these are gonna be books that I'm gonna maybe turn to turn back to or want to turn back to I, I get that feeling like I'm, I want to like this, at least especially the first book is still like in my head like I still think about parts of the first book that completes my first book of Smutathon yes um, I didn't think I would finish it tonight but I did uh, so it is now it's almost 11 o'clock I'm still oddly I'm still awake I had to be to work at 7 a.m this morning and I am still like awake and raring to go so I think I don't know I should probably just go to bed 
but I kind of want to start um, Checkmate This Is War by Kennedy Fox, which would be my, um, and I think it's my Enemies to Lovers book. Oh, my camera's sitting on my bullet journal while I wrote down the prompts. Um, anyway, um, but yeah, that is my Enemies to Lovers book. That one's like 300 and some, both of the, all the books I'm picking to read are like three, between 300 and 400 pages. Like they're not short books at all, but, um, that one's the shortest of my other Kindle Unlimited book that I want to read, which is To Love Jason Thorne. I think that one's like 400 and some pages. So I'm going to do, I'm going to read Checkmate and then depending on when I finish that one, if I could squeeze in To Love Jason Thorne, we're going to try that. If not, I do have the um, Royals novella, Tarnished Crown, I think it's called, um, by Aaron Watt, which is uh, the Gideon novella from the Royal series, uh, which is like Paper Princess, Twisted Palace, those books. Um, that one's pretty short. I don't know if it'll fit. I'll have to see if it'll fit into any of the any of the prompts, but uh, it's short enough that if I need something small to feel like I've accomplished <laughs> accomplished more in this readathon, I might squeeze that in in place of something else. But we shall see. So uh, this vlog is getting a little bit a little bit brighter, a little bit on the the successful side now that I've successfully accomplished reading my first book and it only took me five days eight ninth tenth eleventh five days to finish but you know it's what happens when you're a busy working girl okay friends so it is the final day of smutathon and I still have not I don't remember what my last update was I know I was still reading checkmate this is war um, I'm currently only 68 percent of the way through that one um it isn't quite noon yet I had a half a day at work today so I am home already um so according to page wise I've got about 100 pages left to read which is absolutely doable for, for to finish this today so I think I'm going to end up with um two books completed for Smutathon which is pretty decent for me actually because uh historically I usually just read one book a week so me reading two books a week is actually pretty good um I was hoping to read three um I may sneak in a novella that wasn't on my TBR but we'll see about that one um so yeah and I think um even though Smutathon is over I'm still going to continue with the books that were originally on my TBR because I do really want to read them and I do still I already have uh to love Jason Thorne on my Kindle and ready to go so I think I'm going to read that one anyway next um and then the other two I would still have to purchase but we'll see how much they are when I look into it but I really do want to read Bad Saint at least so I'm definitely going to be buying that one um, but yeah, that's, I had a really, like, I have a, this vlog, this vlog, sorry, the, once again, the dog is playing with the bone on the hardwood floor. This vlog's probably super boring, mostly because I worked all week, so I didn't really have a lot of time to do anything. Um, I would get home and try to read, I would, uh, potato for a while, and yesterday, actually, instead of reading, I got really into, like, on a writing sprint, so I did write... I think it was like close to 2,000 words. Yeah, it was like 1,800 words I wrote yesterday, which is pretty good. Um, I don't know if I've mentioned the online role playing I do. It's not like um, MMORPGs. It's not like that. It's like actual writing role play. So where you write everything out like a book. Um, so yeah, I was on a big sprint with that yesterday. So I got quite quite a bit of that accomplished, um, which. Even though it, I didn't feel so accomplished with my readathon, this kind of made up for it because I was in a writing slump pretty bad uh, throughout like most of December. It's just about noon. Um, I'm not quite hungry yet. I ate a late breakfast at work. So I think, I don't know, we'll see. I do have a couple um, writing replies. I may see if I have any like muse, writing muse, um, and I might do a little bit more writing and then I'll try, I'm definitely gonna try to finish this, these last hundred pages today. I think it'll absolutely be doable and then um, I'll update you guys once I get 
a little more once I do make a little bit more progress on something or other. What up guys, so I'm back to officially close out my first ever Smutathon vlog. Like I said, this was probably super boring because I worked a majority of the week. Um, but I did end up finishing two books for Smutathon. So I did finish Checkmate This Is War by Kennedy Fox just a little bit ago. And I think I'm gonna give it, I was on the fence between three and four stars because it was a very, very well done enemies to lovers romance, especially after I read Falling for the Bad Boy. And I was just like, not, I mean, it was good for what it was, but it, I really didn't get the enemies part of the enemies to romance. This one was done so well. I wouldn't even consider, uh, like, I don't even think, they. we haven't even gotten to the lovers part of the enemies to lovers romance. I mean, we kind of did near the end, but there was like something happens and it leaves you on a cliffhanger at the end. I feel like that would have been a really good cliffhanger if not for one minor minor well it's not a minor detail but it was I don't want to give it away um but there was just one part of the cliffhanger that I was like not a fan of I feel like if it would have been done slightly differently I would have been like I need the next one now like the ending didn't make me want to jump and grab the second one right away so I am good with putting it down and putting it aside for the moment so I th like it was going really well until that bit at the end um but i'm gonna keep i think i'm gonna keep it at four stars because the enemies part was i think really well done the banter was just really funny and some of the stuff that they said to each other just made me laugh um there was also a little bit of a clingy stalker like situation going on that was I was, I'm really worried. I was like really worried about it. I thought that that was going to be like the big cliffhanger thing at the end was going to cause some kind of crazy chaos. Um, and I mean, it may in the second book, I don't know exactly what the second book is involved with other than the cliffhanger at the end. Um, but so yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see how, where that goes in the second book. But like I said, it's not something that just like, I have to read it right now this second. Unlike with uh, when I read Enthralled by Gianna Darling, I had to pick up Enamored immediately following, uh, which is why I, that book was not originally on my Smutathon TBR. And oh my God, it was so good. Um, I did like Enthralled better than Enamored. I think I mentioned my thoughts on Enamored earlier on in this vlog. So out of the nine prompts, I actually didn't mark I didn't mark the ones for Checkmate This Is War. Checkmate This Is War is enemies to lovers. Really well done, I might add. Um, and I have to say, I'm not really one for office romances. I mean, Travis's whole office, I mean, while the crazy stalker girl in his office was an interesting part of it, like, just the general like atmosphere of the office setting and having projects to do and stuff. I'm like, I'm super bored. <laughs> um, they don't really interest me all that much, but I'm, like his job wasn't like a primary. I mean, it was an important part for his story, but like I'm just glad the job itself wasn't like a big thing. You could kind of consider a forbidden romance really because it's a um, best friends sibling sort of romance or like siblings best friend sort of deal and travis and viola's brother drew are roommates and they've all been friends since childhood and travis and had always had a thing for viola viola had a thing for him but they never acted on it and then something happened when they were kids that she now hates him um and they like, hate each other ever since and it's kind of like a miscommunication sort of thing understandable though um and it was like, it's like always, it's like his best friend's sister is always off limits. And like, even at the end of this first book, Drew still doesn't know. So technically you could still consider this a forbidden romance. So out of nine prompts, I had two books that covered two prompts each. So, all right, not too bad. That is the end of my Smutathon vlog. I had a really good time. Um, reading some really good smutty scenes, especially in, actually they both had some really good smutty scenes. Yeah, they both had some really decent ones. Um, although I have to say the ones in Enthralled were way better than the ones in Enamored. Just, just saying that. Um, but yeah, so I think, 
I don't know. I don't know what my next readathon is. Um, oh, I also forgot to mention that Checkmate This Is War does fit into my first uh, romance opoly prompt that I rolled. So I rolled a seven and that is BFF's house. So it's a uh, best friend sibling romance, which is Checkmate This Is War. So we got one down for romance opoly. So that means I get to roll again. Let me all right, so pretty much what I'm doing, this is my little bullet journal setup. I'm not showing the rest of it because it's horrible, but I am keeping track of at least this on my bullet journal. Um, so I'm keeping this little tabby here to mark where I'm at so I remember, so I can count from my last place. So what I'm going to do is, some people are doing it in the order. I'm rolling the dice, so when I get to the end, I'll just start back from the beginning again. Um, and then if I happen to finish, I think I'm doing the moon. There's two different... Um, sets of prompts I'm doing the moon one first I think so I finished oops BFF's house so I'm using the dice roller on um, random.org and we're using two die and we're gonna roll the dice so I got a 10 all right so 10 from BFFs. This my printer is running out of black ink, so got ten. Got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten is library. So we are going to look at the challenges. Moon challenges. Oh, read any book you want. All right, cool. Let me just make sure that I'm on the right BFFs house. Best friend, sibling, romance. Yeah, okay, we're good. So. Library is a free space. Read any book I want. So I think that's going to be To Love Jason Thorne. I think that's what we're going to decide on, which is perfect. That fits exactly my plan. I'm just going to put my little sticky there. And then we're going to mark it. And that's it. I suppose I could have done that. Romance Outplay is a separate thing, but I feel like because this is a yearly, year long reading vlog, that I'll just plug it in videos as I go along, give you updates when I have a moment. Um, so, yeah, that's it for Smutathon. I hope you guys had a much more successful readathon than I did. I mean, for me, it's successful, but I know people have been reading seven, eight books this week, which kudos to you because I don't, I mean, I wish I had that kind of time where I could read that fast, but I don't. Um, I also don't. Unless I find a free audiobook or a free app where I can get the audiobook, um, I don't normally do audiobooks just because I can get Kindle Unlimited books for free and read them for free and I don't want to have to pay for the audio when I can just read the book for free. So anyway, that's it for this vlog. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully my next one won't be as lame and boring. Um, but yeah. Uh, Comment down below, let me know how your Smutathon went, and I'll see you next time with a new one. Bye!